I started releasing music in general just because my band at the time uh, had had someone else put out uh, a CD of ours, and when I got it, I was I was happy that somebody else wanted to, but also kind of uh, wondering why we couldn't just do it because we had done it before, and uh, then from then on realized how you know as long as you have the capital, it's really easy to do it if you want to. I mean, I'm kind of a control freak, but it's also more rewarding to know that I did everything in it, you know, even if I didn't write every part of every song or do all of the art or all of the printing, at the end of the day, it's, you know, part more, a larger part of me. So in a roundabout way, I started it for myself. But as time went on, I had friends who needed help and really liked their stuff and they were dumb enough to let me do it. So it was great. <laughs> I chose the cassette partly because of what the release was. It's a live release of a band who is pretty noisy but really great live and kind of impossible to capture that live in any way. But I thought if it's live and it's on a tape um, with this band that's already pretty abrasive and really bass driven, um, you know, cassettes, the frequency and everything just sounds heavier. Uh, and, and it was just an awesome thing to work with a CD for, or I mean, not a CD, not something that was a flat circle, something that was, you know, three dimensions, I had like a spine. Um, and the art and packaging and everything could be wrapped around, you know, this item. It's not, it wasn't a CD where you had a top and a bottom so much. Uh, it wasn't a record where, you know, you have to be careful about the grooves. Like, cassettes are pretty durable. So for me, that was kind of exciting to be able to, instead of making a, you know, jewel, cl jewel case with a J card in it, I could do what I did. You know, I'll put a little, really thin slip of paper around it, and then the insert around that, and this thing's fine. It's not going to get damaged. So that band only had one other release at the time, and the tape just came along. You know, I was really interested. I was making a lot of mixtapes, so... It worked out really, really well, and it's one of my favorite releases, if for nothing else, just because I finally got to do something like that. There's definitely only two releases I have that I didn't do the artwork for, um, but I still like to think of it, you know, somewhat under my control. So for the Animal Lover one, <clears throat> I had my friend Chris do it. I just asked him to make me one 11 by 17 black and white image in Photoshop and leave all the layers. So he did that, and then I manipulated everything after that. So what the one side of the insert is, is exactly what he sent me. And everything else is what I created from it. And I really like having the, the like art director control of everything, like looking at it as a big, big picture, but I'm just naturally a really detail-oriented person. So I can get really wrapped up in a pattern that's like in one little spot. And that was kind of what I love so much about that cassette in particular, is I got to find this layer that you don't really even notice until you see it on its own. So I put it on one part, I put it on the slip of this like pattern of like negative space circles. And then when you look at the insert, you see that, but you probably wouldn't have noticed that had it not been there on the slip in the first place. So to create artwork for anything, there's no key. It's just like, I just keep doing it until I find something that I can get really infatuated with. You know, negative space even. The breakdown I do with bands and, um, and the records, they usually end up getting about a quarter of whatever I press for free, just as this initial, you know, thanks for letting me do this. And uh, after that, they buy them all for me wholesale. There's not like a key exactly to how much I'm going to charge. I'm going to make sure that my wholesale is at least rounded up a full dollar from what I spend on everything. And um, what the band sells them for is completely up to them. And I kind of like the idea. I, I did this before I was in Antilles. I put out one of their CDs and they cost me like, I think $2 each to make. And so I, I, I gave them their first 30 or 40 copies. I was selling them the CD for $5 and they sold it for two or, th or no, they sold it for three or four. And I just thought, I was kind of just like, guys, you're underselling me, this sucks, but they sold out on their first tour. And 
the band made, you know, whatever, however much money right away. And that's awesome. You know, I'm really happy they could do that. And then they bought more from me and then they charged four or five, whatever. I, I don't know. I want them to know, like, that's why I'm doing it. I, I don't want it to be like, yo, you got to give me this share because I helped you put this thing out. It's like, you're letting me do this. You know, I get to tell my mom about you. Uh, it's exciting for me. It's why, um, it's why I want to do it in the first place. Very rarely do I have bands approach me. It's usually me approaching them. Um, but they're usually friends, so it's not too stressful. And money sucks no matter what. Like, it always creates problems, even in the best scenarios. I think tapes are really viable for, for, I don't want to say like only limited use, but when I see bands put their, you know, first demo, their first whatever out on tape, it just feels natural to me because the first time I was recording anything, it was in a karaoke machine in the corner where we practiced. And I can't say that I still do that. I just don't have a problem with you know, people like putting that into like a reel. Oh yeah, we put out this full length and here's the cassette of it. That's fine. Um, but I think tapes work best when it's like, you know, my instance is this live recording. Not a lot of people really want to hear that. It's basically the seven inch plus another song. Um, you know, a demo, something like that. Like maybe a pre-release, you know, it's something, it's not as heavy as a record. It's a little thing. They can sell them for less. They're cheap, you can get them out. Um, but Weezer's The Blue Album on cassette sounds so good. It's so heavy. It rules.